<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but coyotes are, are very local. They have they have dialects, and uh, and and sometimes the calls in one area are not the same as calls in the other area for the same cause. Yeah. And for the for the same uh, purpose. Uh, but uh, if you if you do go online and you and you see uh, on on YouTube coyote versus lion, you'll see about three or four examples, good examples of how they are responding with different kinds of calls for uh, for the lion. That's just a different area is all it is. So, um, but this uh, this coyote that you've uh, you've seen that the um, the calls of which I witnessed on your video, he he was nervous and uh, and. At the same time, he was fairly safe because of that. I've, I'm convinced that because of that cliff there, the area he was looking was the area he was interested in, and that and that means that's where whatever was making him nervous was. But that was down from the top of the cliff, and so he didn't feel it necessary to be mobile and moving away uh, like he would be threatened at the moment. But he was alerting and probably alerting uh, on a predator. Uh, it could be us. It's a perceived predator. Uh, if somebody was acting with a sneaky, <laughs> uh, a sneaky kind of conduct, uh, because all, everybody out there in the wild uh, reacts to sneaky conduct, but uh, he was nervous, and uh, and I'd say that the uh, the, the vocalizations that he was making uh, had to do with a perceived threat, and if he was actually threatened, again, this is just my opinion, then uh, I would expect him to just melt away into the into the brush but if he if he had a reason to be there like a den nearby then then he would not melt away in the brush he would he would try to attract the attention of the animal with this the, whatever was being threatening to him at the same time that he was notifying the uh, the other animal and the other adult in the in the den that there was danger nearby so I I, I got the impression that this was not a social kind of uh, uh, of yipping that he was doing. It was a very nervous kind of yipping, and he was looking around all the time. And when you see that for a, a coyote, when he's constantly shifting his head back and forth while he's staying in that same location, what he's doing is looking for an avenue of escape. Yeah. <laughs> he's assuring that that even when he keeps on making all this noise and attracting attention to him, he's got a way to go yeah. to leave quickly. So that was that was he wasn't just standing out there. Saying, "Oh, here I am over here, partner." You know? Yeah, <laughs> he, it was not social, and, and I don't think it was hunting related. Hunting is a little bit different. The way they do that, they 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 do it in a group. If they're alone in their hunting, they don't make noise. Uh, yeah, they're stealth hunters. So we had three people see a black cat on the side of the hill uh -huh. and with the tail and slinking away. So um, you think we were crazy, or do you think we might have seen something? Uh, what after you're hiking through the area today? What do you think about all this? I, I didn't see any sign of a, of a large cat out there, and for that matter, I didn't see any bobcat sign either. But uh, but that doesn't mean it wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, we've certainly got territory around here that a that a large cat can occupy and successfully. The uh, uh, there's just no way of telling whether or yeah. not that animal that 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 animal that you saw was uh, for. For me to tell, that animal that you saw was a cat, or if it's even still in the area, they aren't yeah. going to stay in the area very long. Well, the fact that we've been hearing coyotes uh, barking like that repeatedly in the past, could it be that they were hanging out here and they were uh, defending their territory or something? What does it mean to hear that co the same behavior repeatedly? That's an it's very interesting uh, kind of conduct, and it's not something I can interpret really easily, um, I, but I. I, I suspect that if it's that same nervous kind of, uh, of, of um, conduct on their part, vocalization on their part, that, that some other predator that, uh, that bothers them has recently come into that area. Yeah. And his tie to that area, his or her tie to that area, is probably pretty strong, which means I, I suspect he's got a den there. Yeah. And he doesn't want to just pick up and leave. Yeah. Which he would normally do if he was alone, because uh, because the den's there, and yeah. that would mean the den is probably occupied. Because yeah. he'd leave a den in a flash if uh, if it wasn't yeah. occupied by pups. Can I talk to you? You want to talk? Yeah, if you want me to say that. Yeah. So uh, tell me, uh, uh, 
R Richard? No. Martin. Martin. Tell me, what, uh, what, what, what's your impression? You, you, you get all the calls for Department of Fish and Wildlife? Yeah. For the state? Uh, tell Monday me what... mornings, I handle the phones. So uh, what, what's your impression of all this? Well, we, we've, since the drought hit, we are getting inundated with uh, coyote calls, but also bobcat calls. Uh, not so much, but mountain, more recently, a lot of mountain lion calls, uh, not just in, in, in Southern California, but all the way up the coast. Uh, and there, we had an incident uh, this past weekend where they were, the young coyotes, or young rung, uh, mountain lions were chasing riders on horses. They confronted the riders on the horses and scared the people. So, of course, when the people take off, that's prey instinct. So, of course, the young lions are chasing the horses because that's all fun and games and it's yeah. prey instinct. They weren't going to really probably do any harm. They didn't know any better. But when we have, uh, again, very close by you in Elfin Forest here, this guy for the last three nights has had a, bob, or a mountain lion come on his patio. And the mountain lion has defecated all over his backyard and urinated all over the yard. For whatever reason, the guy doesn't know. The guy doesn't have any pets or anything out in his, his yard. Uh, and finally, he went outside. The lion was in his yard. Uh, to confront the, the mountain lion, and the mountain lion just snarled at him, and uh, he just decided he better get back in the house. He had a, has an audio recording, but he didn't get a picture of him. I imagine if that lion's going to be there for whatever reason, why that lion is still there, I can't imagine, but uh, it, it's very unusual to have a repeated performance and, and yeah. you know, success the nights where that mountain lion's in the same place. That audio recording would be interesting, I, yeah, I, because I they don't growl. Yeah. Uh, no, that's what he said. He you, did, can, did, did. you can tell what the vocalization's about, if you hear it, I, you know. I'll ask him to send it to me, because yeah. he, he does have it. I have his name and tell him. That'd be interesting. Him. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's the invasion of wildlife into the urban areas, or at least we've invaded their area, and they're, they're not clearing out. They're, they're still here in all these canyons and everything. And typically, the calls come from the people that live at the edge of the neighborhood, at the edge of the canyon. Yeah. They're the ones that, that, that have the most interface with the animals coming into the, to the area. What about West Nile virus? Have you had any... Uh Contact with that and uh, birds and whatever. No, fortunately not. About it. Fortunately no, not in this area. area. Yeah. 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 No, no, we haven't had any of that. Well, thanks a lot for coming out and checking out the area. We uh, had a good time and uh, nice uh, chat, if nothing else. So thanks a lot. Thanks. Right. Our pleasure.